Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God is good. Yes, originally, as planned, we were supposed to be having a video today speaking about purpose, but God is good. Late last night, I got a call from the young man who uh, edits the video, who takes care of that part of the presentation. So his equipment just stopped working, failed to work. He was very you know upset about the situation he said I, I you know but I told him it's all fine God is good God is good so today I'm back live with you again so God is awesome good morning good morning Michelle thank you for joining us good morning and it's amazing because last night I was lying on my bed and um, before I, I, I before I went to lie in my bed I came across this book that I read several times years ago it's called Creative God's Creative Power by, by Charles Capps. And I love this book. So I was reading, going through it, reading through it. And after I got the call from this young man, you know, I, and he was very upset. I said, it's okay. God is good. He has a plan. I'll just go live tomorrow. And the Lord said, share what you have been reading from that book. Share it. And I'm like, okay, God. God always has nothing surprises God. And whatever the enemy may mean for evil, God always turns it around. He uses that for something good. Oh, Michelle, you're so sweet. She said, we're blessed to have your presence. I really kind of miss you guys too, you know, but God is good. So the Lord said to me, the same book that you're reading from, just share it. Share it with your audiences. I said, okay, God. So today we're going to be in, we, we are in a treat. We're going to have a great treat. This man, Charles Cops, he's a very good, I love his material, good author. But we'll talk more about that. So God is good. So it's good to be back. And um, we're going to be live every morning now. Unless, so we will be working on the videos. I'll try to get, you know, he's going to try to get his equipment fixed. If not, I'll try to get someone else who could help us with that. But we will continue to post our videos. We will continue. But God is good. So Father, we just want to say thank you. Who glory to your name. For all that you have done, we say thank you. For all that you're doing presently, Lord, we say thank you. For all that you will do in the future, we say thank you. Many are the plans of a man, but God's purpose will prevail. And Lord, whatever the enemy means for evil, you've already turned it around for good. And so, Lord, you have a purpose and a plan today. Even as I was getting ready to do this this morning, the Lord said, this is word is for someone. This word is for more than one individual. I, I need them to hear this word this morning. So, Lord, we thank you. And we pray that those individuals who need this word, it would the, you would draw them to this to this um, recording. You would draw them to this to this um, when it's posted. They would be drawn to it, and Lord, as they hear, we pray they will be receptive hearts. And right now, today, even as you spoke in your word, we speak your word again. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, and as God spoke and broke those cedar trees in Lebanon. Even so, God has spoken today the strongholds in the lives of God's people. Everything that is coming in their way to hold them back, God has spoken and it is broken. Even as the word comes forth today, this word is coming forth to break the strongholds in the lives of God's people. All the lies that the enemy has told them, everything that is not true, this word, God's word, will break all those lies would cancel those lies would open the eyes of god's people they will know the truth and the truth will set them free so i thank you lord for your word and i thank you that it's going forth under your anointing and your power and i thank you for receptive hearts i thank you that they would hear clearly what you want to say or what you are saying to them father and i thank you that they would receive it with thanksgiving and they would make the necessary changes in their lives so we give you praise lord we say thank you thank you thank you for loving us so much and for those individuals who this word is for lord i, I pray that they would realize how, how how blessed they are knowing that um god is thinking about them none of us is inferior to god none of us is um forgotten by god and as the Lord is saying, many of you have been questioning me, asking me, well, I've been believing for God for better, better things in my finances. I've been believing the Lord for, for, for healing. I've been believing the Lord for this and that. And you've been questioning God. And God said, this word today is for you. Because yes, you may have been believing and you may have been questioning me and, 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 and doing what you need to do. But some of you, 
Your words are holding you back. Your words are holding you in bondage. Your words are holding you captive. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you that your people would hear. Those who need to hear, they would hear. And they would not be offended, but they would know that this word is coming to them because you love them. So we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. We pray for those who are sick today. My friend who's, who's still in the hospital, we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, she is healed. This, this young woman of God who loves you, she's pregnant. She, she has, she's fighting fibroids. She's fighting lupus. We continue to speak lupus and fibroid. You have no right in her body. We command you to loose her body. We command you to get out in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, my sister is healed. We thank you that that baby strives well in our, our womb that there will be no complications so we give you praise lord and we're thanking you because what's impossible with man is possible with you every organ functions well in our body right now so we call for it a miracle in my sister's body right now we decree and declare my sister you're walking in wholeness you're walking in complete victory complete healing for your entire body and we give you praise father every other individual that's sick and believing you for healing we thank you for touching their bodies today father because we know you took those stripes on your back for healing. So we give you praise. And as our children go out to school, we thank you for covering them with your blood. Even as parents go out to work and adults, whether they work from home or uh, we pray that you will continue to cover them. And I pray that we will honor you in whatever we do. Remembering your word that says in all your ways, acknowledge me, acknowledge God, and he will direct your paths. So today, Lord, we put our lives into your hands. Not what we desire, but your will be done. We decree and declare your will for our lives today, your purpose for our lives today will be accomplished. Whatever we do would would be in accordance with your plan in jesus name amen god is good thank you thank you thank you so before we go into our book it's a cute little book this is the size and i've i've given this uh, it, this is the size it's, it's old i've had it for a while it's called god's creative power by charles cops but our confession for the children today is found in psalm 1914 and the first verse, first part of that verse, 14a, Psalm 19, 14a. I will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to God. And I made it very simple. Say, the words that I say and the things that I think about will make God smile. The words I say and the things I think on, think about will make God smile. So this should be whatever we think of, whatever we meditate on, it should be pleasing to God. Even though someone may tell you something that's not nice at school or may hurt you, you try to maintain things in your mind. Maintain a mind that is pure. The word of God said, whatever things are pure, lovely, good report, think in those things. Even you may be feeling sad, you think the joy of the Lord is my strength. So again, uh, whatever I say... And whatever I think, I would make God smile. Okay? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That's the verse. So I made it simple so a child could understand and a child could memorize it. Confession for, t for adults. And that verse, as I always say, the children's verse, we can also confess as adults. Our confession today, I am an imitator of God. Therefore, I talk and act like God. That's found in Ephesians 5, 1. Again, I am an imitator of God, therefore I talk and act like God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so we're gonna start in our book today. Hallelujah. It's called God's Creative Power by Charles Cops. It's a tiny little book. I'm sure many of you probably have read this before. And as I said, when the Lord, when I got the news last night that um, the, the, the young man, very nice young man, he's, he's, he's full of excellence. He was working and getting the video together for today, but his equipment broke. His equipment just did not respond. And so it was around 11 or after 11. And I said, okay, Father, the Lord told me to use this book. And so this morning as I was praying, the Lord said, there are things that people need to know. There are many people that are questioning, wondering why, they, why are they still in poverty why are they still in lack? Why, why is it things are not going on? They've been praying and they're confessing the word. But in confessing the word, sometimes they've confessed the negative things. And so it all speaks about the power in the town. And we've been saying, chapter one, God's creative power will work for you. The great confession. 
Christianity is called the great confession. But most Christians who are defeated in life are defeated because they believe and confess the wrong things again. Most Christians who are defeated in life, as I say many times, God is a God of progression. If 10 years ago I was living in poverty, I should not still be living in poverty today as a child of God, no. And then some people may tell you, um, as, as Lydia just said to us yesterday, I'm talking about, oh, Christians, I was talking about prosperity. And that's who we are. We are prosperous people. That's who God is. You look in the Bible at Abraham, Isaac, and all those men of God, Solomon. I mean, they were, they were wealthy beyond measure. That's who the God we serve. God wants us to have an abundant life here on earth. And so if we are a child of God, and I repeat again, and if 10 years ago you were living in poverty and you're still living in poverty today, something is wrong because the God we serve is a God of progression. He elevates us. And as long as we follow his word, we will not remain in poverty. I could testify to that. So we will continue. Christians who are defeated in life are defeated. So if you are walking in a defeated life and you say, I've been praying for this and I've been doing this and nothing happened all these years, let's take a little time, take some time, sit down, let's listen to what God is going to say today and check our lives. God, this is all coming to you out of love. God wants the best for us. He's our daddy. Like if you're a parent, you would do the best for your child because you want the best for your child. Even so, it's God and God is even more... He's even more out for us than we maybe are for children. He, kicked it. he takes care of us. And so what I want to get to you to understand is that God wants the best for you. So I'm going to read this again the last time. Most Christians are defeated in life. Who are defeated in life, sorry? Are defeated because they believe and confess, confess the wrong things. They have spoken the words of the enemy. And those words hold them in bondage. So I read the word bondage. I said everybody knows what that means. But let me check what the dictionary meaning is of the word bondage. The state of being a slave. Bondage. The state of being a slave. So most Christians, they confess the word of the enemy. And the words that they confess of the devil holds them in bondage. Meaning they are enslaved. Hold them captive. They, they, a slave is somebody who has control over you. So when you confess the negative words, those negative words has control. The enemy has control over your life, has control over you. For example, when I say negative words, um, like you, there's a need in the house and your daughter or son comes, mom, we need this or mom, I need that. I ain't got no money. What do you think? I, I, I'm a money tree. I got no money. I, I'm, I'm broke. All those words, no money, broke. Now, you confess, and I'm telling you, years ago, the Lord said to me clearly, Lois, be careful, be careful, think before you talk. Look at the words you confess, because when you confess my word, when no, whatever you say, whatever words come forth from your mouth, none of it just disappears and vanishes. Some force uses it. Some force, either me, my angel, either I, it could be used by me, and if not by me, it's going to be used by the devil. He said, when you, if there is a lack, and you say, I don't have any money, I broke. He said, you retire the hands of my angels. They cannot work on negative words. They cannot work on words like those, those negative words, I'm broke. Even though, as somebody said, well, it's just being pretend, you just pretend and you broke, you broke. No, yes, even though you don't have the money, you don't confess that you don't have it. The Lord said to me, instead of saying you broke, you say, God, this is my need. And your word says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so because he said, he said, listen to me, you know, and he said, you know, sometimes you're looking at a movie and somebody has to make a decision and you'll see an angel on one shoulder and somebody looking at like the devil on the other shoulder. He said, you know, really in life, that's how it is. The angels of the Lord are around and the devil has his demons around. So when you say a word like, I am broke, I have no money, you tie in the hands of my angels. They cannot go forth to help you. And those words do not disappear. The devil would say, okay, you heard what Lois just said. She broke. No, guys, you make sure. She said she has no money. You make sure she's going to be keep. She's gonna be kept in that situation. She confessed it. So you use her words and make it happen. 
then you find something goes wrong with the car the washing machine breaks down this happened and so you start spending money and 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 it would come to you like it's a natural wear and tear on whatever you have oh this happens with cars oh this happened oh it's old it's about time that I need a replacement no 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 God specifically said your words you said it it didn't disappear my angels can't use it so the devil sends his angels his demons to make sure it happens and things happens in our lives many times and that because of our confession so if this is for somebody today confession let's be careful yes we would be tempted like last night when a young man called me and he was upset i started laughing on the phone and he probably found it strange and i said we know where this is coming from but I would rejoice because God, God is going to take care of this. I said, sweetie, you do not be upset. It's okay. God knows you wanted this recording. To, you, you wanted to edit this video. God knows. I said, it's fine. God is going to take care. And after I got off the phone, I started praising God. And the Lord told me to start, you, you know, let's go through this book from today. And so, as I'm saying, God has a plan. God, regardless of what you may face today, do not confess what you see, the negative. You think of a scripture first, or even if you don't remember a scripture first, you, the, oh, the, thing, the thing you could say that is safe, Lord, I put this, this situation into your hands. I don't know what to do. I really don't want to say. I don't know what's next step. I'm not going to confess negative. Just said, Lord, I put it into your hands until the Lord started giving you some word to confess. So let me move on. Okay. So bondage means being enslaved. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 1 to 2 says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art snared. I said, what does the word snare mean? I decided to look in the dictionary also. Now, snared is the past tense of snare. It's spelled S-N-A-R-E-D. And so snare, S-N-A-R-E, means a snare is a trap for catching birds or small animals. It consists of a loop of wire which pulls tight, tight around the animal. Snare, again, is a trap for collecting birds or small animals. It consists of a loop of wire which pulls tight around the animal. Now, Proverbs says here, we are snared with the words of our mouth. So we are entrapped. It, it, it is, oh my gosh, this is, who? Oh, just picture yourself, those negative words you say. It's that when you, when you say it, there goes a loop of wire over your head. And it entraps you and it pull, it's holding you there. It's holding you. It's, it's around this animal. It's around your neck and it's holding you. So if you describe a situation, this is the meaning in, in dictionary. If you describe a situation as a sneer, you mean that it is a trap from which it is difficult to escape again. If you describe a situation as a sneer, you mean that it is a trap from which it is difficult to escape. So Proverbs says, thy words, your words, thou art sneered with the words of your mouth. So the words that you say entraps you and make you difficult to escape. So if you've been saying over and over, we poor, we poor, we expect, I got no money, we poor. And then you look back on your life and you said like five years ago, I've been in this situation and I'm still poor. Then look at your words because you've confessed the words. So you've entrapped yourself. You put that, 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 that stuff around. It's, <laughs> I'm going to read the meaning again. Sneer. If you describe a situation as a snare, you mean that it is a trap from which it is difficult to escape. So your words is a snare. You have entrapped yourself and it's difficult for you to get out of that trap. But today I bring good news to you. You can. God has been seeing. God has been hearing somebody's cry. I've been praying for healing. Or I've been praying for, fin for a breakthrough my finances. Uh, these bills are not going away and I'm in debt and, and, and the collectors are calling me. But if you keep saying I'm poor, if you keep saying I don't have, instead of saying, Lord, I thank you for meeting this need. My God shall supply my need. Lord, I thank you for giving me wisdom in spending my money. So God is saying, I've been hearing your prayers, but you have to stop confessing because your words are as, um, as held you in a place that is difficult for you to escape. But today is your day of escape. Today, the, the salvation has come to you. God is bringing the word to you. He's opening your eyes to show you the importance of your words. So I went on to, so as I look at the word bondage, it means the state of a slave. And I look at some synonyms, some other words that describe bondage. That means the same subjection, oppression, and persecution. 
Then I decided to look up the word oppression. Oppression means prolonged cruelty or unjust treatment or control, or it also means um, abuse, okay? Another meaning of oppression is the state of being subject to unjust treatment or control. Another meaning of oppression, mental pressure or distress. So here we are, we, because of our words, we bind ourselves, we're in bondage, which means we are being oppressed. Or you may say to that child, you're just like your father, you're no good. Mm -hmm. His father may have wronged you, he may have cheated on you, left you to care for your son. And you see certain attributes in your son, certain, certain traits, I should say, in your son that is not good. That's like his father, negative traits. And when you confess you like your father, he was this, he was a no good, you will be a no good. You are there ensnaring your child. You're entrapping him. You are, mm, mm, mm. It's, a, it's an abuse. That's what, that's what the word means. Oh, Jesus, synonym. You are abusing him. It's an abuse, a form of abuse. It's mental pressure or distress. And then we want to know what's wrong with you. Why you can't do well at your school? Why you can't focus? What have you been confessing over your child? What have you been confessing over your child? My God, open our eyes, Father. Mm. And some of us, we grew up with this because our parents didn't know better. And you probably didn't know better, but God is opening your eyes today. And I pray that you would take it with a heart, knowing that God loves you. That's why he wants this word to get across to you. He said, if my people would realize the power in what they say. And you may say, well, it's true. He acts like his father. Okay, we know that, but you do not confess it, mama. Or father, do not confess it, whomever. And if you are around grandparents who keep confessing negative things over your children in a calm and nice way. You said, mom, dad, please, we don't, please don't say those words. And if they continue, then you say, mom, if you continue doing this, then you would not be seeing your grandchildren because the words you say has power in life and, and you should not. Yes, this child may be very active. Do not call him bad. I remember, <laughs> Jesus help us. Years ago in my old church, my second son, Joel, is always an active child. He's smart, he's intelligent. And you know, you may have a child like that. The child gets bored easily. He needs something to grab his attention. He's a smart child, and so he needs activity. He gets bored easily, so he's very active. So one day, a woman who's supposed to be a sister in the Lord, a Christian, she looked at my son, and she said, you devil. And I stepped over to her, pulled her aside, because, you know, and I said, sweetheart, I know you probably grew up here, and I said, we don't call him that. He's not a devil. I said, you are a child of God. You know what the word devil means, right? He is not a devil. Please refrain from saying that. And to my surprise, she said it again. So what did I do? I called my son. He was what, four? I said, Joel, look at her in the eye. And you said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I am not a devil. I'm a child of God. Oh, and my little boy, he was bold. He was bold. And he looked at her in the eye and he said it. Now, you see, the first thing I did, I pulled her aside because you don't want to teach your children to disrespect people. But if you pull somebody aside and you tell them, do not be using those words against my child, and they continue, then you teach your child to, con to reject every negative word that anybody says over them. And I put him there and he was bold. I said, you look at her in the eye and you tell her, I, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I am not a devil. I'm a child of God. And I let him start confessing all these things over his life. Many of your children are struggling. Oh, God, how could us so did Jesus have mercy? Mm, Lord, open our eyes. Open our eyes because of the people we associate with. And they would call our children names and we would laugh at it. It's not funny, people. It's not funny. And the enemy, my God, the, there are things that I hear children saying. Negative words, that means... <laughs> Oh, like, like this word, but my children know I'm very big on confession. What you come in my presence and you say something that's not positive, I will correct you in a very nice way, especially if it comes to my children. Nobody's, nobody's going to be confessing no negative word over my children. No, because they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. They are the head and not the tail. They are above and not below. So I remember um, my daughter came home and she was talking about something and it was something funny. And she said, what was the word she said? Oh, goodness. Oh, it was at my, it was at my tip, the time of my, um, mm, Jesus help me. Anyway, it was a negative word that meant something good. And I said, sweetie, what does that mean? Oh, mama, just mean good. So I said, why can't you just use, say good? It's going to come to my mind later. Why can't you just say good? But anyway, 
She, so she knew because the word of God, the enemy brings all these slangs, young people, and it does slangs. And um, even as I speak, some of it may come to your mind, but this is going to come back later, if not today, another day. They bring all these slangs. It means something good, but it's a, if you look in the dictionary, it's a negative word. It, the root of it is something negative. So they're using a negative word to describe something that's good. And little do we know, that's the enemy playing on our minds. We do not realize, oh, everybody's doing it. But he wants to get you to confess the negative word because that's the, what's the meaning, what's the root meaning of that word. So as you confess it, you confess in a curse over yourself. Are you bringing obstacles in the way to prevent you from progressing? And so we have to be so careful with the words we confess. I'm going to continue. So, uh, yes, so this is the thing. Bondage, it talk about slavery and the word oppression, which is a synonym to bondage. When we speak negative words, it brings about a mental pressure or distress. So let's be careful what we say about our children. I remember sometime my daughter, years ago, my daughter got me so upset about something she said. And I was about to say something and the Holy Spirit said, now be careful, be careful because those words you were saying right now would not be the words that I would say to that child. You could bring a curse over your child. I'm like, oops, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We all get mad. <laughs> and we say the obvious what we see, this child just gets on my... You know the word, and then you start getting this migraine headaches because you keep confessing. They get it up my nerves. I can't take this anymore. And you confess that over yourself. So, I mean, it, it, sometimes, you know, you laugh at it because it's so funny, and we do it ignorantly. We don't realize. So those are the little ways in which the enemy creeps into our lives and prevent us from walking in our fullness, prevent us from walking in our wholeness, prevent us and our children from walking in their blessing. So if you see a child is struggling, do not confess it. In the name of Jesus, you will do well. You are a good child. Even though they may be doing stuff that's not good, we're going to confess the word because, listen to me, as parents, we have certain a power and an authority in us so when we confess our words it should be life all right faith so thou art a snake faith filled words will put you over meaning you 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 will excel in faith filled words so faith filled words an example is if your child is not acting right or doing things that are in a negative side instead of confessing you are a whatever you use the negative words and you would do whatever you say in the name of jesus i thank god that you have the mind of Christ and you make wise choices. The next decision you make would be a good decision. And you confess it. And you might hear the enemy kind of laughing in your ear, in your head, and mocking at you. You confess the positive over your child. I know you could do this because you were trained this way. And not only that, you have God that you can talk to to give you the strength to make the wise choices. And so we confess that. So faith-filled words put, will put you over. Meaning you're going to go get over that situation. Now, fear-filled words will defeat you. Fear-filled words. Oh, gosh. Um, I could never do my... Every time I do a math test, I feel I'm never good at math. I'm going to never do well at math. No, don't you say that. Yes, you may not be very, you know, quick at math. It may not be your thing, but don't confess that. You say, Lord, I thank you. The next time I'm going to get a better grade. And Lord... Give me good study skills or help me to understand. When the teacher teach me, this is a prayer the Lord give me when my child was failing in a subject area. Lord, when the teacher teach me, you interpret it in my mind, in my ear, in the way that you know I would understand it. Why? Because God made you. And there's sometimes teachers have different type of, the way they teach is different, the different style of teaching does not, does not, um, help some children their style of teaching is so different that some children do not understand the way they teach so if you come to god every time before you get into that classroom holy spirit lord holy spirit god teach me you explain interpret it in my ear in a way that i would understand because you made me you know how i understand what i understand and what is the best way for me to understand it works my son started confessing that he went from failing to a grade student it works and you ask lord give me different strategies of how to how to um, study strategies, how to memorize. The Lord is going to give that to you. So faith-filled words will put you over. Fear-filled words will defeat you. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. Again, words are the most powerful thing in the universe. And as I say this, I remember one day I dropped my son off at school. And as he got out of the car, he was walking kind of slammed over in this. It's like, and his facial expression like, what is going on there? Why does he look like that? I don't know if he was thinking of the day, what it's going to be like at school. I don't know. But from my car, I rolled down my window. I said, hey, mighty man of God, walk with a purpose. As soon as I said that, my son straightened up. 
the, the, whatever was over his face just left him and he started walking. I'm like, whoa. So there was a teacher nearby and she started cracking up. She started laughing. I'm just saying this to say, words, as he says here, the author says, words are the most powerful thing in the universe. And that's, that came to mind. As soon as I said, hey, you mighty man of God, walk with a purpose. He straightened himself like this, his facial expression changed, and he was just walking in authority. Many of you should have seen him. It was good. I should have videotaped it, but I wasn't thinking about that. But anyway, but I'm just trying to tell you, it is powerful, our words. You could break somebody with your words, and you could build them down, build them up. And especially when it comes to the make, I'm, let me male gender, I'm going to say this. I started Facebook. I started sharing on Facebook because I, I was praying for what friends or never you he had dropped out of college he was a very promising young young man and um had a great future ahead of him and he could not explain to his relatives why he dropped out of college and she said lord pray for him because we don't understand what's going on and as i started praying for him the lord said you know what he himself can't even cannot even explain why he said because the enemy the devil is after our children especially our male children listen to me people we wonder why so many of them getting into guns getting into trouble going into jail the enemy is after our children and he said you know what some of them are fighting but they cannot fight on their own on. He said, you get on Facebook, start reading the word and, and because they need the word to build them up. He said, some of them, they're reading the Bible, but they fall asleep. They get tired and some of them do not understand. And he said, you go, give them the word. And as they hear the word, he said, even if they come up from school or work and they're tired, they could just click on that Facebook link and listen. They could go to sleep listening to it and the word would get in their spirits and would give them the energy, the strength they need to fight. That's how I got started on Facebook. And I thought it was going to be just for the book of Proverbs, but the Lord would say, mm -mm, I need you there, so that's why I'm here. And so I'm saying this to you, especially over your male children in the home, you confess before they leave the home in the mornings, you give them something powerful. You confess something good about them. You tell them. I, 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 the Lord told me while my children were growing up, you call them God's walking powerhouses. And I would say, hey, God's powerhouse, how are you doing today? You mighty man of God. And they're smiling. All my children, friends, know this. When, my, when you know, even when my daughter's in college, my son and they would call and say oh mom my friend says hi the friend is on the phone i said oh put him on the phone what's your name he said oh i'm uh, whatever name is this i'm david i said hey david do you know you are a mighty man of god and they would all crack up so i always call my children friends i say that mighty woman of god because I'm calling it forth. And one guy said to my daughter, he was all the way in Oklahoma in that college, and he said, wow, nobody never told me I'm a mighty man of God. I like that. This is a, t he was what, in his 20s, early 20s? Now, I'm, I'm trying to say this. There is power in our words. And when we, when we keep confessing those powerful words, you don't have to say mighty man of God if you don't want to. But look, look at something good in that young man, and you call it forth, even though that he may be, disobeying you in rebellion you keep calling him the good thing that you see in him and it would it would one day one day it you would see it coming forth because when he goes out there he would hear his mother's voice saying oh she called me a mighty man of god or she said i am intelligent she's expecting me and your words have power mama you have parents you don't know how much power you have let's use that power wisely with our words and so hallelujah hallelujah we're gonna stop here but i want us to go out today with this in mind, thank you, Jesus. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. Therefore, I'm gonna use my words wisely. I will use my words wisely, especially over myself and over my family members, my children, especially over male children. The enemy's not gonna get them, no. Too many of our children are, 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 are out there strong on drugs, are in, are in situations because we need to reinforce it at home, parents. We need to reinforce it. So when they go there and people may say something negative about them, they would look at it and smile. They would not because they know my mother says this about me. My daddy said this about me. So we, let's get, let's come together. Who God has a great thing to do in our children and even ourselves. We may make a mistake on the job. Don't call yourself dumb or stupid. No, 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 please. You make a mistake, you just say, God, you know, but I don't know why I do that. You don't know what was I thinking maybe, but you see, you know what, Lois, you can do better in the name of Jesus. Lois, you make a better choice next time. There will not be a mistake in Jesus name. Lord, I thank you for your wisdom. Lord, I thank you for directing me. Lord, I thank you for helping me in this area. So let's confess the word. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. We don't want to experience death. We don't want to stay the way we are 10 years ago. We don't want to continue that path, but we want life. Again, words are the most powerful thing in the universe. Therefore, I'll be careful. I'll use my words wisely. 
as remember God said to me nothing that you say just disappears in thin air it doesn't if my angels cannot use my words then the devil is going to send those demons to make it happen don't tell your child he's stupid don't tell your child they can't they can't learn don't tell your child that you put in a noose over their neck you 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 enslaving them to those words you are actually you know our words could curse and bless our children so let's so let our words be blessings i hope this is a blessing to you today father i thank you mm. I thank you, Lord. Help us. Help me. Help me, God, that I may be so careful in the words that I say, the things that I say, Lord. It would be the words that you will say because we are imitators. We want to be like you. We're your children. So whatever words we're about to say, we would stop and think and say, would God say this about my son? Would God say this about my daughter? Would God say this about my spouse? Would God say these words about me? Help us, God, to choose our words wisely. Mm. And I thank you for the deliverance that you bring right now to your people. Hallelujah. Who, yes, God. I, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I thank you. Who, you are Lord I pray that they would receive this word with love. And I thank you that the eyes of your children are open. They would not be entrapped by the enemy. They would not be tricked. All those words that the enemy has been bringing, those negative words that the young people use as a slang, as a phrase, oh, it means this, oh, it means that. They would realize that's a trick of the enemy to get them to confess. He knows the power in our words. So he wants them to confess it. And when they think, oh, it's cool, they are confessing something negative over their lives. So, Father, we give you praise and I thank you for your word. As we go forth today, we thank you that we're all covered by your blood. And we will choose our words wisely. We would only confess those words that are good and uplifting and we make, bring um, healing to our lives and enrich our lives. In Jesus' name, amen hallelujah so as you go today remember to encourage an individual a young individual just give them a compliment especially you see look for something if you see a young guy and even though his, his pants may be swagging or whatever and the color shirt is a nice color and it looks good on him you could say wow i like that color in you you look so handsome don't, don't look at the negatives just just look for something and you encourage them that might be the only positive thing they've heard for the day and you don't know what that word will mean to that individual be blessed. As I said, I'm, I've made this song our team song, Miracle Working God. And why? Because as we sing it, we're, we're confessing positive words. And as I say, throughout the day, as we go through our days, we may make up this morning, we decree and we confess it's going to be a good day. And something comes at us that, did, that we didn't expect. And I know for me in the past, whenever something suddenly arises, especially something painful that I didn't expect, I freeze up. And sometimes I, I, I'm just lost for words. And some people, they may use bad words. Or some people, they may just get into the stress mode, that worry mode. But when something arises in our lives, this song, the words, something that you know that you can't fix, something that is so disastrous, you're like, where do I turn? Remember, God is a miracle working God and he's going to work a miracle in your situation. So let's go out with miracle working God. Hallelujah. Yes, and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. For he's a miracle working God. Miracle working God, miracle working God, nothing is too difficult, he's a miracle working God, miracle working God, miracle working God, nothing is impossible, he's a miracle working God. Yes, thank you Lord, oh we bless your name, he restored my soul hearts of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for God is with me. Yes, whatever you may come your way today, do not walk in fear. God, I need a miracle from you, so I confess your word, and I receive it, God. Woo! We're natural working, God. I receive my wife sing it with me miracle working god miracle working god nothing is too difficult he's a miracle working god miracle working god yes he yes wonderful working god Woo, i love my god i just love my god hallelujah mm. 
Thank you, Jesus. Many days so sick, I could not walk. Mm, my God, yes. Healed and restored. Today, I yes, of the goodness is love and, and the supernatural power of a miracle walking God. I walk in my miracle. Hallelujah. I receive. Thank you, Jesus. From the supernatural power in my God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Receive it today. Regardless of how long you may have been in this pain or this medical condition, God is never late. He's a miracle working God. Thing is impossible. Ooh. He's a miracle working God. Miracle working God. Yes, yes. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Nothing is impossible. He's a miracle working God. Oh, we bless your name. We thank you, God. We would not worry. We would not stress ourselves out when situations rise up. Because my God, yes, in the impossible, he specializes everything that you're going through. Bring it to God and believe him for a miracle. Woo! Miracle, God. Nothing is impossible. He's a miracle working God. Yeah, miracle working God. Miracle working God. Nothing is too difficult. He's a miracle working God. Miracle working God. Yes, he is. Wonderful working God. Woo. He's too difficult for my God. I love him. Miracle working God. Yes, he is. Wonderful working God. He's the miracle working God. Hallelujah. Woo. God specializes in the impossible. Whatever report you may receive from the doctor or about your children from school, whatever it is on the job, you put it in God's hands. It's a miracle. I give this to you, Lord. You are my miracle working God. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Fan. God bless you. Good to see you, my, my cuz. And thank you all for joining us today. I hope this has been a blessing to you. It has blessed me. It has reminded me of the importance of my words. So let's do this together, people. Let's confess life of our children. Confess life of our situations. And God is going to work on our behalf. So be blessed. Have a great day. See you back tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Take care. Bye.